After all, if he can wear a jumpsuit with a fiery crotch, I sure as all get out can make a set of stays with a fiery bosom. And if you think that's ridiculous, you should be glad I couldn't figure out how to comfortably make it light up. Hey y'all, Jackie here, and welcome to Fantastical Follies, where we get up to various sewing shenanigans. If you're new here, welcome, and if you're returning, welcome to back to the insanity, my friends. Today, finally, I'm here to talk about my mullet stays. This is the fifth video in my Glam Rock Goes Rococo series, where I'm turning myself into a 1773 Ziggy Stardust. If you missed the other videos, I've linked them down below. So. What the heck are mullet stays, right? I picked the 1770s to work in because I already owned a set of stays from, I don't know, 12 or 13 years back. But they were maybe the third piece of corsetry I'd ever made, and at that point on the internet, there was really not a lot of information about period construction. And what was available, I had no idea how to access. So I didn't know what I was doing when I was making these. And as I started working on this project, I came to the realization that my existing stays just don't fit. So I decided to make a new set. By then I was already on to this Bowie theme and given that he wears a mullet in this time period and in the early 1770s the mullet was also in fashion, it kind of sparked the idea for it. And adding the stomacher seemed like an easy place to incorporate the mullet by making it match the stays in the front, the business end, and be something Bowie themed on the back, the party side. This video is the second in the stay making process. In my previous video, I explained in detail the fitting and mock-up process. This video will be all about the actual construction of the stays. Let's talk about the changes I've made from the existing commercial pattern. First, I cut a size smaller than I needed so I could incorporate the stomacher. The goal was to have a set of stays that'll last me whether I shrink or grow, or shrink then grow, then grow, then grow, then shrink. If you're not going to include a stomacher, make sure you cut the size that fits your measurements. Although this particular pattern tends to run large, so make sure you test it first. The second change is that I decided to forgo the traditional straps in favor of the tape method that American Duchess highlights in their other stays pattern. I liked the idea of the versatility and lower profile and less chance for them to fall off my shoulders because that's something I deal with a lot. I'm also going to be opting for the historically accurate method of spiral lacing versus is the crisscross lacing you see on the front of the pattern. And instead of using the pattern instructions to put the stays together, I'll opt for a more historically adequate construction method. I'm going to assemble the stays, bind everything down, then put the lining in last. This way, if my lining gets grody, I can replace it without having to undo all of the binding. Ugh. I cut out my inner lining. I'm using a brown medium weight herringbone linen I got as a remnant from Berlin Trowbridge. This is really nice fabric and great for stay making, but boy am I about to regret the color choice. Nothing shows up on this damn fabric. I'm not effing kidding y'all. I tried tracing wheel and paper with all the colors, nothing. I tried freaking tailor's tacks, shit. That was probably not a good idea. Disaster. I tried friction pens, Taylor's chalk, nothing showed. It was at this point I lost my temper, put it aside, and tried to go on to something else. So originally I didn't want to spend extra money on dye. I used a fuchsia color for the lining and a pale aqua for the stomacher out of dye I already had in my stash. I've linked to both of those in the description below if you're interested. Okay, so here is my dyed stomacher, and I sort of pinned it to my fabric to kind of see how I liked it. Now, in this light, it looks okay, but in other lights, it just wasn't quite right. I like it. It's very, very pale blue, um, but it just, it doesn't quite pick up this grayish blue here, which is what I was hoping for. So I have decided to nix this blue and I have purchased three different colors of pink um, from Dharma Trading, and I'm going to wait for those to come in and test some swatches and um, see if I can get a better match. Now, if, if none of those work, then I'll use this 
but I'm hoping that at least one of the pinks will look good with this because it's just not, it's just a little too bright. Now I am going to get this cut. I wanted to match the pattern best I could. I started by folding the fabric and cutting out my center fronts so that they would be perfectly matched in the center. I then did the same thing with the back sections. If it looks like I'm randomly placing these, I'm not. I spent a lot of time hemming and hawing about placement off camera before I started to cut. The challenge of doing it this way was that it was kind of difficult to check the grain, so I'm really being careful to make sure everything is straight. This is a time where Chef Jackie is right. Precision is necessary. I cut each piece individually, radiating out in order that they'll be placed on the actual stays. What that means is that I'm not cutting two at a time like you normally would, and I'm having to flip the patterns to make sure that I get two opposite mirror images. The downside to pattern matching is that you waste a lot of fabric. I could have gotten two full sets of stays out of this yard of 60 inch cotton duck if I hadn't done it this way. And here are all of my pieces laid out in order. I did kind of mess the pattern up a bit, but it's not enough for me to mind. So yesterday I got really frustrated and walked away. And I think this is the case for a lot of creative endeavors, but in a lot of the times when you're frustrated and things aren't working out, the best thing to do is just step away. Go do something else and refresh because your brain is not in it and you're not doing your best work. That's what I did yesterday. After a couple of hours, I decided to take a look at my brown fabric again and realized that my red, regular red pen actually looked all right. It is visible enough that I can see it. So I went ahead while I was watching TV last night and redrew every single boning channel onto every single piece of brown fabric. It took me two hours. It was not fun. I was not happy. And I'm going to be honest, they're not perfectly straight, but they'll do. When I'm sewing them, I will make sure if it looks wonky to fix it and we're gonna move on. I am going to get all of these pieces ironed and pin the interlining to the fashion fabric, which I just finished. And then depending on how long that takes, I may or may not start on the boning channels. I ironed all my pieces flat and pinned the inner lining to all of the fashion fabric. Last night I ended up doing some hand basting. I decided I really wanted to make sure everything was secure before I started sewing the boning channels. I think it's going to take me a little bit of time, so I will catch up with you once I have finished. I've been picking at this on and off all day, and I finally got all of the boning channels sewn. And um, I just have to be honest with y'all, I am one lucky son of a gun because this is how much thread I have left after sewing all of my boning channels. That's it. If my boning channels are off, I am screwed. I can maybe fix one or two and that's it. Um, if I have to fix more than that, I'm going to have to completely redo all of them because this thread, I mean, there's no label. I have no idea. I'm sure it's like a Coates and Clark thing, but how old it is and whether they still carry this color is beyond me. What I have done is gone over and basted the bottom of each piece, including over the tab. So what I'm gonna do is cut this, but I'd like to have a little bit of a, uh, of a security measure here because this linen is going to fray like crazy. I'd really like to serge it, but um, I don't trust myself on the serger to get that precise. So I've done this for each piece at the bottom so I can put the boning in. I will do a full sew once I've got everything fixed. What I'm going to do now is get all of this pinned together with, with the lacing strips on, baste it together, check the fit. And if we're good from there, then I will start to sew it together. If not, then it will be another adjustment time. Now I will say that I haven't put the side, the horizontal boning yet on my stomacher. I'm not there yet. I want to check the fit on this first and then I will deal with that. So here we go. The fit turned out to be fine, so I went ahead and started on the horizontal boning channels. Now I mentioned this in my last video, but this technique can be used to add additional support to the front of stays if you feel like your bust needs a little more than just the vertical bones. I cut out four pieces of linen from my scraps, wide enough to hold the boning. I surged on each side just to keep everything from fraying, and then sewed two pieces together to create two separate boning channels. 
I do end up adding a third channel in the center later. Then I pin the channels and hand sew them onto the inner lining, making sure not to catch the fashion fabric in the process. Do this with the boning in as well so you don't accidentally sew the boning channel shut. Here's the basted set of stays. I've added the boning. It's a little long and I'm gonna have to reorganize it before the day's out. Note that this little tab in the center back is the seam allowance for the sleeves. Don't bone into this channel. That's what she said. Alrighty friends, stays update. Last night I put this on when I got home from work. I didn't do it on camera because it was dark and I was rushing because there was a possibility we were going to lose power today because it's cold out. Um, that is a big deal here in Austin where I live. It's really pathetic that this is a big deal, but it's a big deal. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clip all of these erroneously long ones off. One adjustment I decided when I was trying this on last night is that the front tab um, has one small piece of boning here, but otherwise that's it. It's really floppy. So I'm going to insert another piece of boning here and I won't go from the top obviously because of the slit. I will have to go into my basting and insert it there. Oh, okay, here's the die that I did the other day. And I was waiting for daylight to look at these, but of course it's gray and gross and it's gonna be gray and gross all day and I need to get this going. So look, even my coffee has a sweater on today. This is the baby pink, this is the hot pink. No, this is the hot pink and this is the bubble gum. Um, they're all very, very similar. They're all very pale and I wish they had more saturation to them. But um, looking at this, I'm almost positive that I'm going to go with the, with the baby pink. It's a little redder, more orange than these two are a little bit cooler toned. And I really like this fabric. It, it's coming together nicely, but it's very grayed out. It's very low saturation, um, except for the, the dark colors. And I didn't want the binding to be dark. I wanted it to be kind of pastel-y since I don't get to wear pastels very often. They don't look good on me. This is a good excuse for me to get my girly side out, question mark. So, but I definitely think that this is going to be the best shade. So I'm gonna try it with uh, three times as much dye and see if I can get just a slightly more intense color, if that makes sense. I'm now adding the boning channels to the four floppy tabs. I'm making sure to follow the angles of the existing boning. All right, so I'm wearing my medieval smock instead of my chemise, my proper shift, but um, that's because it's cold in here. I am crazy and because I'm hot so much in the majority part of the year, I refuse to put my heat on unless it gets below 57 degrees in here. I'm pretty happy with the way this is looking. It is still kind of falling down a little bit. I need to get the shoulder straps on. There is a little bit of wrinkling happening right here where there is no boning. Um, this is probably the most strained seam out of everything because I've got it tucked in. It's, it's the one that's cut on the bias. So I think I'll be okay though. Once I get a proper seam in this instead of basting, I'm hoping that will help that a little bit. Otherwise, I'm not having any issues. I'm glad that I added the, the extra tabs on, or the extra boning channels on the tabs. Um, I think that works a lot better. In any case, I'm pleased with the way this is going. Um, before I sew my side seams for real, I'm gonna get the eyelets done, I'm gonna get the boning basted in, and then from there, I will try it on and do one last fitting to make sure it's okay. I would like this channel to be a little bit wider, but because I'm getting a little bit of wrinkling in here, that might not be a smart decision. I might just have to deal with the fact that this is going to be the way it is. I, it may just be the way it is. Some things will never change. I removed the lacing strips and used my handy lacing ruler to mark where they needed to go. Don't forget to account for the seam allowances. After much experimentation and a couple of redos, I have finally dyed all of my accoutrement. We got lots of fun stuff here. It's very, very pink. This half inch tape is the binding for the outside. And then we also, I also dyed the three quarter inch tape for the straps. But I also think that on 
the, the center back and the, the side back, I'm gonna cut these tabs a quarter of an inch smaller. I'm not gonna do it on the front because they're already pretty short, but um, it's, it's like midway down my backside and I just feel like it's a little too long because the pattern is using a 5 8 inch seam and I'm using a, a quarter inch seam. So I'm just gonna, just gonna cut it down a little bit and I think that should be fine. I'll have to adjust my boning a little bit but as you can see, I haven't finished all of the tops of the boning. I've only sanded down the bottoms. So that's the plan. Wish me luck. I went ahead and finally sewed my seams, then pressed them open. To prep for the binding, I'm now machine sewing very carefully a quarter of an inch away from all of my edges to make sure the boning is secure in its channels. So a couple of notes. The first is I was dumb and these bottom tabs, I sewed, <laughs> I sewed my seam allowance here before putting, I took the boning out because I didn't want my needle to get caught and then I, like an idiot, uh, forgot that then you don't have a way to put the boning back in on these tabs that I, I put. So I had to take those out, sand down the tabs, put the tabs back in or the boning back in and then re-sew the tabs. And then I went in and cut down all of my boning to make it fit. Now I have not yet sanded all of the tops. Um, that's probably gonna happen tomorrow because it really needs to be done outside. And I have a neighbor who's a chain smoker and I can only do it when he's not here because otherwise I have an asthma attack. Um, one other thing, I have not been following the actual pattern directions. I've just been intuitively putting this together, which, which is fine. I mean, it's a pretty simple thing to do. However, I didn't pay attention to the fact that there's supposed to be a stitch line right here. I had it up here. It stops down here. So I drew my line and I went back and stitched. I did have enough thread to do that. Um, so now all I left to do is iron off this line here. Do you want to be careful because I've got boning on here. I don't want to melt the boning. And another thing to note, because I sewed this on the machine, I had to go back and do it the first time because of my seam allowances, I caught the seam allowances. So I ended up putting like a pin just to keep it flat while I was um, sewing these bottom channel kind of stoppers. So just something to note. One other thing I'm gonna do, and I'm just gonna do it now while the iron is on, is that I realized that this is seam allowance to attach the, the, the straps. And obviously I'm not putting straps on these, but if I don't end up liking my other option, my straps, I'm going to add actual straps onto it. So I'm only going to fold that down. I'm not gonna cut it off. All we have left now is to sand this off and then it will be time to attach the binding. After the binding, the only thing left I have to worry about is sewing the straps on and then putting the lining together. So we are getting somewhere, guys. I am really excited. I trimmed down the fraying edges and prepped for the binding. Off camera, I pre-folded my binding with the iron. Then I began to pin to the outside of the stays. Since the binding is by far the most time consuming part of the construction, we're going to sew the entire thing down before we even sneeze at the lining. I then carefully by hand, don't use a machine for this unless you've bought stock and seam rippers, backstitch the entire binding down to the front. Now we're gonna flip it over, pin it, and hem stitch the backside down. Then it was time to bind the tabs. Dun, dun, dun! This is by far the most finicky part of this, and my best advice is to pin the fuck out of it and take your time. It pays to be precise because then you won't have to rip it out and redo. So here I'm showing you how to bind the top of the tabs. As you can see here, I have the sides of the tabs pinned as well as the tops, and you want to make sure you pin the tops with a generous quarter inch or whatever the half measurement of your binding tape is. We'll wrangle the excess tape on the other side where it won't be seen. Once you take out your pin at the top, use your fingers to smooch the tape into place. It takes a little wrangling and it's awkward as anything, but that's okay. Do what you need to do to make it smooth and pretty. Definitely use a back stitch on the tape in the front and make sure the stitches are as small as you can get them. Remember that the binding is protection against your pokey bones. Don't worry if you end up having excess binding as you sew. It's really hard to pin it perfectly. If you're willing to deal with it like I was here, you can just leave the binding long and cut once you finish the first side to save tape. 
Okay, so this thread that I had in my stash that perfectly matches my dyed tape is actually extra fine thread, which is not what you want to use when you're making stays. It keeps breaking while I sew, and oh my god, I was ready to chuck the spool after finishing these tabs. The sides of the tabs are pretty straightforward, but when you get to the corner, you want to sort of sew the straight vertical bit down a little into the corner and use your hands to stretch the tape out into a right angle. Use your thumbs and again, expect this to be a little fiddly. Stick with it and you'll have a nice turned edge. And there goes my thread again. Okay, so when you sew the backside, you miter the corner as I'm demonstrating here. I really wanted to show you the other side of the tab process. Unfortunately, I took it with me to hang out at my local craft brewery one Saturday afternoon and was so quick that I had both sides finished while I was there. So I've enlisted a human tripod for this bit and apologize for any extra movement while she's trying to get at artsy shots and I'm yelling at her to hold still. Here I am mitering one of the corners. It's pretty simple, just back stitch the one edge and then fold the excess over into a neat seam and keep whip stitching it down. Before we pin into the lining, we want to sew the straps to the shoulders. I've searched the ends and now I'm whip stitching all along the strap, making sure not to prick into the fashion fabric. This is going to take a lot of strain, so make sure you really secure this thing down. Notice I'm not using that extra fine thread anymore because I knew it wasn't going to hold sufficiently. You're not gonna see these, so it doesn't matter that the color doesn't match. Now pin the straps up against the outside of the stays so they stay out of the way for the lining bit. One thing to note, I forgot to sew the outside portion of the straps at this point, and you really want to do that now instead of after you put in the lining. I assembled the lining pieces in the same manner as the stays. Not sure what I'm actually saying here because my mic wasn't on again. So this part is pretty simple. You want to match all the seams and pin them down. Then turn under the seam allowance on each side by the eyelets. You don't want to cover the eyelets or you won't be able to lace them up. Turn under the upper portion of the seam allowance in the same manner and pin it down. For the tabs, snip, press, and fold until you get a nice neat line, making sure it doesn't overlap. And then it's just a matter of whip stitching the lining down to the tape, making sure your stitches and your fabric don't show on the other side. Now, time for the stomacher. I noodled and noodled over what I wanted to do for the mullet bit. I ended up basing it off of this fabulous jumpsuit Bowie wears. After all, if he can wear a jumpsuit with a fiery crotch, I sure as all get out can make a set of stays with a fiery bosom. And if you think that's ridiculous, you should be glad I couldn't figure out how to comfortably make it light up. I drew out the design I wanted and then used color pencils to figure out the colors. Then I painted the design onto the linen. I'm using Lumiere paints by Jacquard for this. I've linked to them in the description below. I really like these paints, they're flexible and great for all fabrics and have crazy sparkle but not enough sparkle because then I decided to outline the fire in gold glitter puff paint. Of course I did. Here's the finished stomacher. As you can see, I've already um, pinned the binding to the backside. There, you see it. Um, I was gonna do this in daylight, but for some reason, my crappy can light that's in my sewing room, which is directly in the center of the room, which means I can't film anywhere without a shadow uh, at night, which is why my lighting is always really crappy at night. Here it is, it just, you can really see the metallic sparkle 
in this light. I don't know what it is about it, but I love it, guys. I am so excited. And then all I have to do is sew the little strap guides to the back of the stays, and this thing will be finished. Y'all, I'm so excited. And there you have it, a set of 18th century stays with a mullet stomacher. I am so happy with the way these turned out. They're a lot girlier than I originally planned, but <laughs> that's okay. They're super comfortable to wear and that's the important thing. I'm already well underway with the rest of this outfit, which includes the prettiest star pannier, and then finally, a robe à l'anglaise en retoussé, which is just a fancy term for an English gown with the back bustled up. Oui, it's the French term, don't you know? Oh, are you French, Chef Jackie? Of course! Why do you think I have this outrageous accent, you silly sewer? Now there's no reason to start with the taunts. Ah, blow my nose at your bias tape, you so-called fantastical follies. You and all your silly sewing costumes. <laughs> Well, that was hostile. What I was going to say before I was so rudely interrupted is that we are getting close to finishing this project, y'all, and I am so excited. I have a lot of other fun things planned for this year and I can't wait to share it with you. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't. It really helps my videos get seen. And if you'd like to be notified when I post new content, you can click the little bell. Well, that's about it for me. If you'd like to make my day, I'd love to hear from you. Leave me a comment down below and introduce yourself, tell me a joke, or share what you're working on, listening to, or watching. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll catch y'all next time. Okay, now that my pattern looks like Hulk Hogan's hairy chest, one day, I'm going to do an entire run through without forgetting to hit record at some point. Helps if there's not shit in this all over the place. I hate living in an apartment. Hopefully you can't hear that because I need to get this shit done. What was I saying?